welcome back to another episode of the Can I Tell You Something podcast. Today, we have quite the deep dive into the TV show Survivor. But don't worry if you've never seen it or if that's not your thing. There's still going to be a lot to learn from this episode about, you know, why Survivor is the way that it is, the cultural implications of the show. We'll even get into some juicy controversies that have happened over the years. And then we'll kind of open it up to what's the significance of this show within the spectrum of reality TV in general. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting show. This is a historic reality TV show. So without further ado, let's get into it. So Survivor is one of the most famous reality competition shows ever. And you may be wondering, what is Survivor? How does it work? Why are people watching this thing? So from Wikipedia, I have the general r- format and rules of Survivor, which I think explains it quite well. The first U.S. season of Survivor followed the same general format as the Swedish series that it was based off of. 16 or more players split between two or more quote-unquote tribes or groups are taken to a remote, isolated location, usually in a tropical climate and are forced to live off the land with meager supplies for 39 days. Frequent physical and mental challenges are used to pit the teams against each other for rewards such as food or luxuries or for immunity, which we'll get to. Forcing the other tribe to attend what's called tribal council, and tribal council is like probably the biggest plot point of this whole show, where the people that show up to tribal council must vote off someone that shows up there. So in the early stages of this game, if you lose a competition, that means that someone on your team has to go. Right. They're, they're going goodbye. Then at the halfway point of the game, the tribes merge together into one tribe where it's now an individual game. And everyone is competing for individual immunity, making sure that they're safe for the next tribal council. When it gets to the final three or sometimes final two, the people that have been eliminated, usually it's the last nine people eliminated in that single tribe phase, vote for a winner. They become part of the jury. They become a part of the jury. And it becomes really juicy because the people that you vote out of the game are responsible for determining who wins the game. And that sort of flip creates all sorts of drama. Also, the, the need to survive to the next tribal council creates all sorts of drama. It's a classic reality competition show format. People are getting eliminated every episode. There is tension around it. And it's just so... It's electrifying to watch sometimes. It, it truly is. I would definitely agree that the bulk of the juice is during tribal council the rest of it like yeah it's fun to watch i i enjoy watching it but they're like the competitions are nice and all Mm -hmm. that's not what i'm there for yeah right it's like i can judge people all day and be like oh i could have done that yeah but tribal council oh man that can get so dicey yes and it's because people are competing for the prize, which is $1 million. $1 million, In yeah. one or two seasons, it was $2 million. Anyway, that's what people are competing over. So when you bring money into the equation, people aren't going to be their best, especially when they're hungry, they're weak, they're out in the elements. They're not thinking clearly. Yes. <laughs> so I think... The worst sides of some people have come out on this show, which makes for great television. But that also explains why there's kind of so many villains in the Survivor cinematic universe. Yeah. And they've really played into that. I'm sure everyone out there who's seen it, like, knows what I'm talking about when I say Russell Hance. Mm -hmm. Like, there there are just some really, really juicy players that kind of make life at camp difficult for others, right? So you explained the gameplay well, but like this is a complex situation and every season is different because, you know, they're casting different type of people. 
obviously they have some typecasts. Like there are some recurring people that they do have. Like they'll always have like kind of a himbo. You always need one. They'll always have some sort of athlete Mm -hmm. or celebrity, minor celebrity. I think Mm -hmm. they've kind of gone away from that, but that was a thing for a while. A very attractive woman. Like we'll get into the controversy in how they cast people because it kind of sucks and they've gotten a little bit better and more aware now. But each season brings something new and exciting. I will say, you know, as a fan watching seasons now, since they've exclusively gone to Fiji, I think it's gone very downhill. It's not as enjoyable to watch for me. I love the older seasons when they were kind of going all around the world. There's problems with that too, right? We'll get into some cultural appropriation and just how I think CBS didn't handle being in other cultures and respecting them very well. Again, they've addressed all of this and I'm sure that goes into the decision of why they wanted to stay in Fiji, keep everything in one place. They have islands that are literally just sets now. Mm -hmm. But the show's gone through a lot of change in the... 20 plus years it's been on the air. And you said in the beginning that it's like the most popular competition reality show. Absolutely. It might even be the most popular reality TV show in the way that it was the very first one. Yeah. So this brings us perfectly into the origins of Survivor. The genesis. The genesis. So Survivor, the American TV show, is based off of a Swedish TV show with the same general rule format titled Expedition Robinson. And Robinson is like a a folklore sort of character adventure. Robinson Caruso? I believe so, yeah. Um, And the person that brought the show to the U.S. who was... Charlie Parsons, so you see that name show up a lot, uh, saw this Swedish show, and he also had a show at the time uh, titled Eco Challenge, which was like an adventure racing type of show. So those of you who have seen The Amazing Race, it's very similar to that. He saw the Swedish version of Survivor and thought to himself, there's a lot of really good stuff here. But the Swedish version was... He felt a bit too mean spirited and he was more interested in the like the human condition, the social interaction between people. Real quick, I have to stop you there. Yeah. Mean spirited. Can you define that a little more? Yeah. So the he viewed or the the Wikipedia article says he viewed the show as a bit crude and mean spirited. My guess, I haven't seen Expedition Robinson, is that they really emphasize how vulnerable people are when they're out on their own. Mm. And they really emphasize how I would say the modern person isn't too adept at dealing with not having those normal luxuries. Right. It, it, it might be more similar to a naked and afraid style. That's what I show. got the vibe of and and again i it, for anyone that is an expedition robinson fan because there are a lot of seasons of it and it just got rebooted uh back in 2018 um i might be a bit off with it but that was my take charlie parsons really wanted to emphasize what that human connection was the human dynamic because he found that that was the most interesting part of this competition and so then the the show is first pitched in the very late 90s. It finally gets approved by CBS, and it is filmed between March and April of 2000, and then released by the end of May of 2000. Okay, that's insane. Yeah. Just to give some perspective on television and how long it takes to produce shows, I mean, some shows will film for over a year, and then they'll be edited for even longer. Right? Like, that is an insane turnaround, even for reality TV. Because now we know they're doing two seasons a year. That's still a rapid turnaround. Yeah. But a month or two months? (laughs) It's two months tops. That's unheard of. And 
of course, for anyone who's seen the first season, it's not great, right? Like, yeah, they're, yeah. They, but they had to start somewhere. And obviously, a lot of people loved it because it took off. And so that turnaround really shows, or it leads to a show that is run now for 45 seasons. They are pumping out two seasons a year. Just, it is insane to look through the numbers that this show has done in terms of quantity of content. So let me let me break it down for you. Survivor, the TV show, has had 679 participants. 75 of those participants have been in two seasons. 23 of them have been in three seasons. Six of them have been in four seasons. And one has been in five seasons. My God, that is so many people. Because the crazy thing is, these are all just like randos in the world, right? Like these are people auditioning sometimes several times over the course of many years to get on this TV show. So it's not like they're casting like just celebrities. Like These are just everyday Americans who have some sort of history with the show, are obsessed with it somehow, and just want to be on it. Even you auditioned. Yes, I did. I think 2021. Yeah. Didn't get cast, unfortunately. (laughs) You really should audition again. But I think that's really, really cool. That, like, that, what was it, 670? 679 participants. 679 individuals have been on that show. Yeah. That's so, so crazy to think about. And I think just speaks to the popularity and the reach of this show. And also thinking of 23 people being in three seasons, if a TV show runs for three seasons, that's a huge success. Right. And so we're having reality competition people in three competitions in Survivor. And a lot of them are like making careers or have made careers off of their appearances on the show, which is kind of a popular thing now like we're seeing a lot of influencers come out of reality dating shows or reality shows on netflix like that's kind of its own thing but for people like over a decade ago to be doing that was very unheard of because the only other reality tv is you know things like the kardashians people who are already celebrities quote-unquote celebrities Mm -hmm. and or people who are already in like the media's eye Yeah. And so for everyday people to kind of make something of themselves is really interesting. Yeah. So in addition to all those different people being on the show, the show has ran for 45 seasons. So since May of 2000, and they have aired 654 episodes. That's soap opera levels. Not fully, but it's close. It's it feels like it though. Yeah. That is so like truly so many episodes of TV. I will say they can do that because every episode follows the same pattern. Yeah. They're, like, yes, there are differences in people and how they act and the drama that goes on. Of course. But more or less, it's the same and every single season is structured the same. So from like a production standpoint, that is... That is so simple to film. Yeah. So I can understand how they'd get to that volume really quickly. All they would need is the demand, which they've clearly had the entire time. And so the, yeah, speaking of demand, because, you know, I think there is this idea that Survivor was the first reality competition show. And and my research was showing that that wasn't really the case, that there were other forms, but it was the first reality competition show that showed any sort of promise of like profitability for the people who go on it or for the network for the network so it was like the first time like a network was picking up one of these shows gotcha and cbs i assume picked it up from the get-go they've always had it so when we think about this history of television and where survivor fits within it the titan that they kind of took out and that CBS took a big gambit on was Friends. They scheduled the second season of Survivor at the same time slot as NBC's Friends. 
and they won. They You're were kidding. yeah, they were the the number one rated show on television for season two of Survivor. Hold up, okay. Wild thing to say there. <laughs> yeah. How? How did it become the number one rated television show by season two? And then why did they lose it? Because I don't want to offend anyone out there, but like the early seasons are good and all, but like they were still figuring out what Survivor was. I would say once you get past season 10, like things start to get really juicy. And I think that what I've found online is that people would disagree. There's like a huge kind of rift between old players and new players what do they call it in the game old school new school. old school versus yeah. new school i mean the amount of times people drop that oh it's my God. <laughs> nuts now yeah. but you know like the style of how the game was played has changed over time it's only natural of course that's going to happen but when you go back to watch the first couple of seasons you're like my god that was a piece of cake like, they are given so many supplies, so much food. Like, they're not even given food anymore. They're yeah. barely given fire. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, and they take it away from and them, And then they too. take it away, right? And, of course, yeah. if you have so many seasons and you want to do something new each season because that's what television expects, that's what the viewers want, mm -hmm. you're going to, like, run out of ideas eventually. Yeah. So, of course, they're starting out with all these wonderful ideas, they want to keep people safe and healthy, mm -hmm. right? Because this hasn't been done before, so they don't know kind of what that barrier is before it starts getting unsafe. And and to be clear, there have been medical evacuations on this show many times. Yes. And, I feel and like they, almost every season there's something goes on. Yeah. And they like a lot of it is that they need to be extra safe with the participants. Things happen, like people will have these, you know, haphazard little injuries that, you know, if it gets infected and, you know, you can't continue or, you know, yeah. Well, exactly. And when you're out in the elements and the hungrier and hungrier you get, you're not going to be thinking as clearly. Totally. So, you know, little falls or accidents can become really bad really quickly. But there's also issues with like, Parasites. Remember yeah. Tony oh, got yes, the parasites Tony. and he said he like dropped 70 pounds or something wild. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of stuff happens too because if you're in an environment like Fiji or any other tropical area in the world that you don't live in, your body isn't used to that climate and the things that dwell there. Right. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of hazards. I find it interesting though how the gameplay has changed from old school to new school. Yeah. Because when you take those really, really essential items away, like rice, like flint, like an ax mm -hmm. or cookware, fishing stuff, people become more desperate earlier on in the game. So Absolutely. in the older seasons, like towards the end, that's kind of when the juice is, is beginning. Yeah. But in the newer seasons, it's like right off the bat. Because yeah. by day three, people are starving. Yeah. Right? So it's it's kind of weird watching from my couch, especially if I'm like eating something. I almost feel kind <laughs> Always of... Always snacking. Yeah. I yeah. almost feel kind of like, not guilty, but just kind of weird. I, I always ask myself, like, why do I like watching this show? Like, mm -hmm. I am watching people simultaneously like at their happiest moments because they're finally on the show but also like at their worst yeah right starving dirty desperate crying like over emotional i don't want to say over emotional that's so mean of me to say of course they're going to be over emotional they're starving yeah but you know like personally i wouldn't want a camera on me when i'm at that that stage of desperation so I feel kind of weird watching it, but I also can't look away. I think that it, it, it brings up a really good point in terms of the tone of Survivor, because that's something that they've curated, I think, exceptionally well, especially when we compare it to other reality competition shows. Oh, yeah. Um, Survivor, and, and it is based off of like how it deliberately took a step from Expedition Robinson and said, no, we want to talk more about the human condition. We want to 
really make these people relatable. Plus, Americans like having people that they can root for on television, too. Yes. We saw that with the difference between British office and American office, I think, is the most um, cited example. Except for what about, this is a total tangent. Okay. What about the Great British Baking Show is so positive and nice, but then all of our cooking and baking shows in America are literally cutthroat. You're on yeah. the shopping block. Yeah, like that's a whole it, other thing. I think too. that that statement only works some of the time because yes. also in Survivor, like there are just a lot of really really mean people who go on the show. Yeah, I mean, think Russell Hand, <laughs> think freaking Abby Maria. If yeah. anyone doesn't know who she is, please look her up because she's absolutely fascinating. But she was like, she's ridiculously mean on the show. Yeah. And it's hard because you don't know how much of it is like a persona that people are putting on. Mm -hmm. I'm sure producers, when you get cast, are even kind of placing people into boxes like we're going to cast this person because they did X, Y, Z. Yeah. Right. You have to remember that reality TV is scripted to a point and survivors no exception. Yeah. But there are like just a lot of I'd say negative people who go on the show and then there are some really positive people. It's uh cuz there the the negativity come so I just want to quickly touch on like the human condition that they try and highlight. They really show I think in in a good way that these people are in a really vulnerable position. They are like the heightened emotions are entirely justifiable. Oh, definitely. And it's like there is more sensitivity, there is more paranoia and stress. They do a good job of saying this is the environment that they're in. This is not how people are all the time. This is how they are in the context of survivor. That being said though, the there are a lot of pressures that push people to act, I would say, less than ideal. Act a bit more mean. Act a bit more mischievous. Um, well, and you can tell that by the people I named. They do that right off the bat. Yeah. Day one, they are the immediate villains. And that's why I feel like they were either told to do so, or these people are just like that in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And that's why they were cast. And there's, there's an element, too, of like, People will take the show in two ways. One, they'll show up and they say, this is a TV show. And if you do well enough, you get a million dollars. So I will act through this TV show to get the million dollars because that is the most important thing to me. The flip side with that too is there are people that say, because this is a TV show, I acknowledge that everyone else is also a human outside of this TV show. So someone's going to get a million dollars. I hope it's me. But I also need to keep in mind that these are like real humans I'm dealing with. And they deserve the same dignity and respect within like what is fair within a game. I think that perspective was not as present in old school play. And in the newer seasons, since they've addressed controversy and they've kind of just become a more aware television show, that kindness and awareness of other human beings is a lot more prevalent. I think there's been a decrease in the villain archetype yeah. almost. And people are, you know, they're still, they still want to win and they're still beef with people but overall i think people are a lot nicer to one another yeah which for me <laughs> i'm just gonna say freaking boring like i <laughs> i think it, it contributes yeah. to why i don't like this show as much anymore because people can't oh, i don't want to say this but it's like they can't say anything anymore <laughs> not in a like racist or homophobic or sexist way like yeah cancel those people right and yeah. there's, there's been a fair amount of that on the show but also, it's like, people are getting really, really uh, offended on the... You do know, you know what I, I mean? I, it's I, like, you, yes. look, you look at someone wrong, and they're going to go cry about it. 
It's like, you are on a TV show. You auditioned to be here. You know what it's like. You're out in the elements. I mean, let's just talk about it. In the most recent season, two people left because they just didn't want to be outside anymore. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You yeah. auditioned to be here. Do you know how many people you beat out? To get here, that, that, that is so that so upsetting, and yeah. I don't know if it's just really bad casting on CBS's part, or it's like it's been going on too long that people just don't want to be on the show anymore, right? Yeah. Like it's over, and that is what pisses me off. Because don't get me wrong, I love Survivor, but it has to end. <laughs> I'm sorry that just came to my mind. It's just like a show can only go on so long before the quality is completely lost, and I think Survivor has met that. Yeah, I, I can I can see that perspective. I, I want to round out what you're saying because I think that the the phrases you can't say anything and like people get offended. Those are, you know, it, they can I, quickly like I, I heard you qualify those statements and I, I understand where you're coming from with those. Can I do some clarification? Yes, absolutely. OK, because I know that that specific phrase like people can't say anything yeah. is typically some. uh right rhetoric that is not what i'm getting at at all yeah. believe me i just really like villains and let's just use abby maria for okay. example because i mean she is quite possibly i think the juiciest villain to ever <laughs> reign on survivor oh yeah I, I uh, love Abby Maria. All, she's electric she's very electric i will say a runner-up for me is russell hands but then mm -hmm. also jatia Jatia, when, yeah. when she spilled all of the rice out, my God. Also, Tony, I think, is a great example of what that line between, like... I wouldn't classify him as a villain. He's not He's, he's not just, a villain. But, I think he's the greatest player. But he he's willing to push the boundaries. He's willing to to get his hands a bit dirty. And, and that's what I think is a bit missing... Exactly. Is like people are so tentative with scheming unless it's really safe. No one's willing, like, they're like, all tiptoeing around each yeah. other because they don't want to offend each other. Like, come on. It, a great example is now people are like lying about what their profession is. Yeah. Because they don't want people to assume that they make too much money and yeah. therefore don't need the reward. I know that that's happened before, mm -hmm. but I'm seeing it like multiple people a season now. Yeah. And that's just so annoying for me. I'm like, it's, it gives me a big old ick because they don't want to appear too privileged or to offend people that they're even there. And for me, it's like <laughs> everyone's there for one reason and it's to win. Yeah. It it also like that bit too. I think that part of the reason why people want to denote their or like to lie about their profession specifically, there's two sides. Yeah, there's the like they don't want to be perceived as not deserving of the million dollars. Mm -hmm. But the other thing too that I really think it is is that Americans can't define their personality outside of their occupation. Period. Like there is no. I this is my little rant. Nowhere else in the world. Really? Well, actually, there probably are other parts of the world. But I'll just say, in general, Americans are obsessed with what we do for work. We will talk about work, work, work outside of work as a social thing, as like this. It needs to constantly be our defining personality. Well, it's the first thing people ask. What you. do you do for work? Right. Yeah. And it's like it is a cultural norm in the same way that if someone says, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Right. Right. And if you say, no, today's been terrible. I'm stressed out. And like, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Okay. That's what I'm getting at with the villains, though. It's exactly. Like, when people are actually honest, they get labeled as villains. Yeah. And you know what? I'm just going to say it. Like, I would be a villain. Okay. I'm going to tell you if you look bad. I'm going to tell you if you suck. I think I would be a schemer. That's no, I can guarantee <laughs> that you would be one of those people who's tiptoeing around because you don't want to be perceived as anything but kind. And you know what? They never win. They never win because they are being walked on by the other people the entire time. I'm sorry, honey. I don't mean to <gasps> you offend. You hurt my feelings. I'm voting you out. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, Alfie and I have decided. That's what I'm trying to get at, though, Absolutely. is that the gameplay has changed so much that the 
players, the emerging players that could be making really big moves yeah. are either just too scared to do it or it's done at like such a small degree that it's just not as interesting. Yeah. And because of that change of gameplay, I've noticed that people who are different or kind of like socially awkward are being the ones who are now villainized. Yeah. We saw that last season with Carolyn, who has become my favorite player of all time, mostly because I think she's just an incredibly strong, beautiful, and smart woman. But I also saw how while that season was being released, people were so, so mean to her. Yeah. Because she was different. And like, to be fair, like she really wasn't. It, like <laughs> it, with the with how they were presenting her, there was nothing like nothing you've never seen before. Like that's right. just <laughs> But she stood out in that group because yeah. players are so scared of like filling an archetype or being probably who they truly are on television that you're just getting a lot of really boring people on the show. And so I loved her. I am still very, very upset that she didn't win. It's fine that she didn't. I still think she should have. We can move on from that. But we're seeing it now with this season with Emily. Yeah. Like I fully see that this like new repetitive hatred Mm -hmm. towards women on the show is coming out of this need to be like over inclusive and that is why like i just i don't believe that survivor should be on the air anymore and this is coming from someone who is a true fan like yeah i i am fully obsessed with the show yeah. okay i wouldn't go on it personally because i hate sand that's a <laughs> whole like if i can't have lotion i, I would just be screwed right it, yeah. it's not for me but i love watching it i love the gameplay I really like getting to know the individual players, mm-hmm. but they're so freaking boring now. Like it it needs to end. Yeah. And that's that. Like that that's my opinion on I, the show right now. I think that what it does is it it like when so th- this is like a pattern with social behavior, right? Is when when a collective group decides to be more inclusive of one group another group slips like another group gets pushed to the out so it's always yes. interesting and and this is why i think it's it's interesting to look at survivor being on the air for 20 years because we can see all these values all these changes if you want to see the change in how we speak about things like race and gender in the us just look at survivor through the years even things like like people in the early seasons wouldn't say whether or not they were gay. But now it's like, it is entirely okay. Like that is a huge change. And you see it within the same show. So I think what we're seeing here, my take on it is, it's interesting. I think that someone like Emily is very similar to the demeanor of someone like Cass. Oh my God. My, like my second favorite player, like I love Cass so much. Chaos Cass. And these are women that I personally relate to yeah so of course i'm going to like them more right like i can identify and see myself in them Mm -hmm. and i think that's why it hurts me so much to see them not only villainized but just like truly hated on on the internet and i know that it's freaking incels right like i get that the people (laughs) who are hating on them probably aren't the greatest people in society but it still sucks that that's a narrative that's very alive. And I do want to make it super, super crystal clear. I am very, very happy that Survivor has gone through some social changes. Like you said, there were some very, very bad racial implications mm-hmm. on the show. There, there was blatant homophobia on this show. Yeah, That's not something I agree with, right? Like, I am glad that they have addressed it and I'm are at least trying to move on from that. Yeah. However, like you said, if you address some issues, some other issues are either going to prevail or like fall through the cracks. And I think that there's still a long way to go with how they're presenting the non-skinny white blonde woman. Yeah. And it's weird because it's like, okay, Carolyn is skinny white and blonde. But... I don't know. It's like I get I get really torn 
with this issue because they've tried so hard to get away from their classic archetype in the first 10 plus seasons yeah. of the people they cast. And I think they have cast some very interesting people since then. But I don't know if they're just not presenting them well or then they're casting other people who they know aren't going to like them. I understand they're creating drama. Yeah. But something still just feels wrong and isn't really working. I think me. I think that what we're seeing is like you know you know it's it's more or less we're seeing the messy work of what equity and media looks like and a lot of it comes at the cost of tokenization of a lot of different types of people and communities what i think is also happening is that where these lines were a little bit more concrete along race gender sexual orientation now they're being abstracted more and more where it's like gender but this it's like the the intersectionality these these dimensions of just what it is to be human people are going to have a bias towards one or the other and some of those biases are showing and i think a lot of it has to do with um people that maybe are a bit more introverted uh like asocial um neurodivergent is like the the term that's being used a lot right now um but it's deep. yeah. I I agree with what you're saying, but I think it's so much deeper than that. I think the things that CBS and Jeff have chosen to address are great, but they're so general that it feels really performative. And you're right that some things that are a little more specific, like neurodivergency, have fallen through the cracks, but they shouldn't because it still applies to so many people. And it's really upsetting for me to see men who are a little socially different, for example, Cochran, mm -hmm. yeah. they're so celebrated and loved. And then the women who fall into a very, very similar archetype are hated or called bossy, mean, bitches. Like it's, to me, it's such a double standard. And that is something that CBS has not addressed. And I doubt they ever will. That's yeah. what's upsetting, especially me a woman who tends to be labeled that and has been labeled that in my life, it just sucks to see that. It's like you see all these other things being addressed and then there's some things that aren't. Yeah. And I understand that the show like can't address every single complex social issue in the world. I'm not calling for that. I just wanted to like get that out there and start a conversation on maybe why that hasn't been addressed because it's not just Survivor. This goes for all media in general. All television shows, especially reality, really looks down on women. And it's weird because isn't it marketed for women? Um, yeah. A, like a lot not, of it not is. specifically Survivor. I think that's actually probably more for men. But it's just weird. I like I'm trying to figure out why they wouldn't do that, why they wouldn't address it. And I just don't know why. And for me. That's why I've kind of just lost the magic of Survivor. Am I still watching this season? Mm, yeah. But it's like, it's not going to be memorable for me. I think that it's, I mean, it's interesting. We, we talk, we're talking in general about representation in media, right? Yeah. And there is the supreme irony of us being <laughs> a white couple like me, just brown hair, brown eyes, you blonde hair, blue eyes. Like, totally. yeah, we were okay. We got to acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is who we are within this, this context. But I, I do think that what you're talking about is, is profound. It is complicated. And I think that what's so difficult to remember too, is that, I mean, CBS is a huge general american media company and it's like we we live in a very i would say a very progressively minded city the contrast between what seattle's i would say like public discourse is and what is reflected in media it, it couldn't be greater yeah um that being said though i do remember this past june 
listening to like a lot of podcasts, hearing a lot of people talk about how devastating like the the rolling back of corporate pride felt. And it wasn't because corporate pride was doing anything great in terms of addressing LGBTQIA plus issues. It was just that at least they acknowledged that it was okay to celebrate Pride Month in a store. And that it even existed. And that it even existed. Yeah. And so, like, as much as we want to, I think, be critical and justifiably critical of Survivor, I would say that what's important is that it is marching in the right direction, even if it feels like it's at a snail's pace. I mean, CBS is like, that is I don't huge. even think it feels like it's at a snail's pace, to be honest, because they've just recently addressed these controversies in the past couple of years. Like, true. to me, yeah, to true, me true. it true. felt like they kind of changed the ethos of their show almost overnight. It's for simple oh, things. It, you know what? Like, Post-pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it actually happened really quickly. And you're right. Like, they can address everything, and they probably addressed the, I hate to say this, but like far more important issues. Mm -hmm. I'm just commenting on the ones that apply to me and that I can even speak about. Yeah. Because I cannot speak on race. I cannot speak on <laughs> yeah, sexuality. Yeah, yeah. Nor will I, because that is not my place. Yeah. I, it's, I think what's also very interesting, too, about what you're bringing up is I think that there is... As you said, when like when a woman shows up and brings on a lot of characteristics that are celebrated in men or, you know, thought of as cute in men, then all of a sudden it's this horrible thing for a woman to express the exact same stuff. And like, if, first of all, it's infuriating to see because I know that it, like for me, when I'm nerdy or when I am being smart or when I'm doing any of that sort of stuff, it's cute. It's fun. It's, it's celebrated. Fetishized. It's fetishized like, too. Yeah. But men, then, yeah. Men can honestly take on any personality they want and some form of media will latch on and fetishize that. Yeah. But for a woman to be successful, first of all, they have to look a certain way. Yeah. But they also have to act a certain way. And it's almost this um, aloofness or childlike behavior that's celebrated. It's you will the see golden that. retriever boy dynamic a it's, little bit too. Yeah, but it's it's almost different because this is such an old archetype for women in media. Like, yeah. they talk really soft and they're always happy and yada, yada, yada. And the moment a woman challenges that, they're villainized and it's god it's just so so upsetting to see because you know the list of players that we listed yeah carolyn Cass, probably even abby maria mm -hmm. and emily in this current season they're all actively challenging that and had to and are currently facing constant backlash and I understand, like, that's what you sign up for when you go on TV or when you put media out. <sighs> but it's just, it hurts every single time. Because, to me, those are some of the greatest players. And it hurts to see the men be consistently celebrated. And women continue to kind of fade into the shadows and i know that's an overgeneralization there are women on the show who have won who are celebrated i'm just noticing a certain personality trend yeah that god like, i don't even see really any media addressing it or doing it doing anything about it because why would they it's like it's not an issue that a giant yeah. company such as cbs would deem important like after Black Lives Matter, after Pride Month problems, they're going to want to address these larger issues because there's social and political pressure to do so. Mm -hmm. That's great. 
they need to address them. Hey, you should have addressed it 20 years ago. Glad you finally caught up. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's so performative when this stuff happens so quickly and they're reacting to what's happening, happening politically. That's why I'm like, hey, if you actually felt that way, why did you have a show that was like actively culturally appropriating every single island and or country you went to? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, that is why I get so, so mad. Yeah, that's why. Because it's so blatantly fake. It's it's the I think that there is the survivor experience, which is it is like sweet and sour. You know, there is a lot that is not great about the show. There's a lot like I th I think, again, this is why it is such an interesting show to look through historically. Yes. And I think it's like it is. I mean, we have almost 700 instances or data points of this is what is represented in media within the same show format. This is what is being valued by one of the biggest media companies in the U.S. And so it does show all of the weaknesses. It shows all the things that are being overlooked. And I, I mean, the, it's interesting the, what you're saying about like being too quick to address something being too quick to overcorrect or to correct in general and, and like, you know, draw a line in the sand, it gets read as, as fake and performative. And I think that, um, I think that our generation is much more aware of that. In fact, probably a bit hypersensitive, like overreading some of those things. Sure. Um, I do think that uh, millennials do a pretty good job of calling out that, especially with the the millennial uh, calling out of like J.K. Rowling. You know, that's a an entire big significant cultural artifact, and they are okay with with addressing its shortcomings. I think that that is so important, and it is those discussions that actually push us to have the change from early 2000s survivor to today and yes today it is like it is not ideal it's a very imperfect product right but i want to say that that's what makes it interesting for me to watch and interesting for us to watch and discuss is because we have these sorts of discussions about it all the time right i think that's a really good point is you talked about it earlier, how the human condition and interaction is what makes this show so good. Yeah. And that is what we end up talking about. Very rarely do we care that much about specific gameplay yeah. or specific idols or, you know, anything that might be in the show. It's more so, hey, how did that make us feel? Mm -hmm. And why did it make us feel that way? Yeah. And so that's why, you know, this conversation's a little more general. I'd love to do a follow up episode, like walking through specific controversies. Yeah. Because yeah. I think there's a lot to learn over, um, you know, certain phrases that have been on the show, certain mm -hmm. uh, theme songs and, and yeah. uh, imagery that's been used. Like, there's a lot to learn there. But this is just kind of a, hey, this is how I feel. Yes, there are problems with this show. I'm going to continue to watch it. But we all should continue to talk about it yeah. as well. Because no, like a show can never reach a perfect harmony of being 100% socially, quote unquote, accurate. I'm not asking for that. But I do think the work for improvement is not over and it needs to keep going. And, you know, the show has to end at some point. Yeah. Right? It can't keep going on forever. And I think we're seeing that the quality has significantly diminished mm -hmm. in the last few years. I'm sure a lot of you out there who are fans of the show would agree. If not, let us know. I, I'd love to see a difference in opinion. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, I wasn't actually intending to go on this rant. I, I was going to go mm -hmm. in, you know, kind of celebrating Survivor because I do love it. But I also, you know, I couldn't just not address my feelings yeah. on this. And I'm really glad I did. I'm sorry if I sounded a little scatterbrained because none of this was planned. It just kind of came out. Um, but 
Yeah, there there is a lot to talk about with Survivor. And I think when doing this episode, it's really our plan was just to talk about it and see where the discussion led. And and that is the nature of this show, is that we want to discuss things. We want to pick through the nuance. Um, and we want to do so in a way that hopefully when people listen to this, they have thoughts for themselves and things that they disagree with, things that they would challenge. If they were in the room with us, they would say, no, yeah. I disagree. Or I think you're wrong there. I think that that's an overgeneral. Like, that's important because once that discussion stops happening, the problems get worse. We avoid difficult conversations because they're difficult and because they're nuanced and because they're challenging. But uh, we know that historically avoiding that sort of stuff is one of the worst things to do. Exactly. It's what, you know, failures to communicate lead to some of the most um, devastating outcomes socially. So we're just throwing our, I, I guess, our two cents in about Survivor. There's so much to love about the show. And you can tell that there are a lot of people on that show that are working Hard and listening to the community absolutely it, like that that is something that is very clear is that they're trying hard and that's the uh, gosh it's like kind of the disappointing part right yeah because i i have no doubt that the crew on that show because a lot of them have been on it forever yeah love the show and are trying to keep it alive but they can only go so far. Like CBS has the final say. It's yeah. their show. Yeah. They are the ginormous corporation that owns everything and is making the decisions. God, it sucks because like in media, oftentimes the people who are actually behind the camera have the most to say. Yeah. But they never actually get to say it. And so a lot of the decisions we've seen about the trajectory of Survivor has definitely come from executives at CBS. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. I think that contributes to it being a little bit out of touch, mm-hmm. right? And a little performative because that's how corporations work. That's it. Like, like, yeah, yeah. That's kind of the my final thought is, yeah, you're right. This show, the show's great, but at the end of the day, it, like a company is behind it and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. We're still going to watch it and you know, support certain people, right? Like I'm rooting for Emily yeah. very much so right now. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched tonight's episode. We're recording this on the eighth. So if she's voted out by then, I guess I will be I'll be, I will de- be, I'll be devastated. devastated. <laughs> um but yeah, I would really love to hear what you all out there have to say about this. Because Survivor I think has touched so many people in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to hear the difference of of perspective out there on how the show has made you feel, if you've ever auditioned, or maybe if you've ever been on the show and are listening. You know, there's there could be so many discussions about about the inner workings of the gameplay in the show. Yeah. So let us know in the comments. Let us know on our socials, which is at can I tell you something podcast. SMTH is how you spell something, by the way. Yes. Can I tell you SMTH podcast? Yeah, that was a better way of saying it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all for joining this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I Again, I apologize for being a little scatterbrained. It's just sometimes how how my brain works when I get a little fired up. You had to tell us something. I had to tell you something. That's yeah. right. But we will see you next week with another juicy, juicy episode. Mm-hmm. But until then, bye. Bye.